Let's return to the original example of the reciprocal function and examining the limit as it approaches zero. Um, so the question asks us, does this limit exist or no? Uh, the limit as x approaches zero of one over x, where again, we could do, try this graphically um, and numerically. Um, and actually, this is an example from the packet. Whoops, sorry about my mic there. Um, so let's go back, let's go to the packet and this is actually the first one on there. It says, let uh, f of x equal one over x, create a sketch of the function and find the limits both graphically and numerically. So we could always create a, if we're trying to create a graph of something from scratch by uh, point plotting, or we could you know, move to our calculator, go into y equals and type it in, which often that is the faster and easier way. Um, but one recommendation I would have for uh, the specific case of one over X is, you know, we could plug in stuff like one, two, three, four, where if I plug in say one um, into, into the function, um, that would give me, sorry, I'm trying to get my iPad working, right? I think it's, I think it's good to go now. But if I plug in one, I would get one because one divided by one is one. If I plug in two, I would get one half. If I plug in three, I would get one third, four, one fourth, and basically it would get smaller and smaller and smaller. And as x goes to infinity, the limit as x uh, the limit of x approaches infinity of this function, it would head towards zero. Uh, and again, we would uh, express that using limit notation uh, towards infinity, um, which we actually haven't we didn't I didn't discuss that, but it's the same idea as limit towards x approaches a. Just instead of approaching a specific value, uh, if we let it be um, sufficiently large. Now, if we want to know as it head as it approaches zero, we could check say values like one half. And again, we could use we could type in one half um, in our trace when we're on our graph. We go trace and type in say 0.5, and that would give us two. Well, of course, the reciprocal of one half, as we call it, the reciprocal function. If you do one divided by one half that would be two. So, you know, right there, halfway point, we'd have two. Uh, the reciprocal of one third is three. The reciprocal of one fourth is four. So as I'm getting closer and closer fractionally to zero, um, it's reciprocating. And it's actually a, this very symmetric graph um, in, in well, in certain, certain regards. But anyways, as I'm getting closer and closer to zero, the reciprocal, you know, if you divide by something smaller and smaller, this is a key idea with division. If you divide by something larger and larger, it gets smaller and smaller. But if you divide by something that's small, it gets large. It always has the inverse relationship or inverse proportionality principle. Um, and really that's reflected in the limit. As X approaches zero from the right hand side, it is unlimited. It can grow unlimitedly large because say I plug in 0.1 or 0.01. The reciprocal of a one hundredth is a hundred. The reciprocal of a thousandth or, a, you know, a ten thousandth is ten thousand. That's the idea of reciprocality. So um, basically, as X approaches zero, for some reason, this is capitalized. I think that's a typo. But as this approaches zero from the right, whether we do it numerically or graphically, um, it's going to grow sufficiently large head towards infinity. So we'd say the right hand limit there is infinity. Again, we could think about this as a wall on the right hand side of the wall, it's going up. And you know, in the same way, the reciprocal of a negative is exactly the same graphical shape. Uh, it's just, it's negative instead because you're plugging in a negative, the reciprocal of negative one is negative one. The reciprocal of negative one half is negative two. The reciprocal of negative one third is negative three and so on. But uh, on the left hand side of this graph, we can see that as X approaches zero from the left hand side, it's going downward. Um, and so we would say that the limit as X approaches zero from the left is negative infinity instead. So this is a case where the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not the same. They're not in agreement. Um, and remember the definition that the generic limit as X approaches A only exists if both of these are the same. So what you might be wondering is, well, what do I say if they're not the same? Basically we say that this limit does not exist. And one way that I've seen a lot of people write is they'll write equal DNE for does not exist or null set or something like that. Technically we should not write that um, it is equal to DNE because 
you, that it's not again kind of like infinity it's that that has no mathematical meaning it's not proper notation but really we we could de delete the equal sign and say this limit does not exist um but for the purposes of just not worrying about technicalities i'm fine if you just write something like equals dne but because th while this is not proper notation uh, it would be more clear to just say this limit doesn't exist um but that's kind of a shorthanded way you can write that when those do not agree um, and in this case, you might notice that it's kind of similar to if you take the original function f of x and we were to try to evaluate at f of zero, um, which is always something you can think about with a limit, but it's never what the limit means. Notice that would give us one over zero undefined. We say that this is not in the domain. And when a value of a function, when a value of x is not within the domain of a function, this could imply the limit doesn't exist. But in some cases, it might actually exist. Like in our last example, um, from the previous slide, let me load that up real quick. Um, this one, the limit actually did exist. It was headed towards pause infinity because both of those were going in the same direction. Um, but no notably different about this example is these are headed in different directions, so the limit does not exist. They don't meet up or they're not headed to that same place. And, you know, again, as we were reflecting with the end behavior notation, uh, the other points of limits could be looking at, well, what's happening to the very right of the graph uh, or what's happening to the very left-hand side of the graph. And in that case, the value of the function was heading towards zero. Um, whoops, I did not mean to do that. Is there an undo button on my iPad? I don't know, or I can't find it right now. Oh, there it is. Um, sorry, the program I used to do this has changed in the last month. So I'm still trying to get used to using my iPad with my lecture notes. But basically as X is headed, again, I could think about that like this, as X heads towards infinity, meaning as I move to the right on my graph, um, what's happening is it's headed towards zero. It's flattening out, you know, we, we discussed this one earlier, but the limit towards infinity, um, or basically as I move to the right on the graph infinite in, in an infinite manner is zero. And as I move to the left, it is also zero. Now notice that these are not, you know, they're like negative infinity and positive infinity are different. They're not the same like how a left-handed limit and a right-hand limit. These, these are neither directional. You don't have a directional limit for infinity because you can't come from infinity, positive infinity from the right-hand side. So those have a different meaning as well, um, but it's a little bit more intuitive in that case.